All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and happy Friday to you. I'm Alex Matthew and this is the All You Need to Know podcast on Bloomberg Quint. Here's everything that you need to know before you start planning your weekend. Hopes that the curve of new COVID-19 infections was flattening were somewhat dashed yesterday with the highest addition in new cases in a single day. Nearly 70,000 cases were added in the 24 hours to 8 a.m. yesterday, taking the total tally to beyond 28.3 lakh. Out of that total, 21 lakh patients have so far recovered. In the national capital, according to a zero prevalence study, nearly 30% of residents have had the coronavirus. The prevalence of COVID-19 antibodies has increased to 29.1% in the first week of August from the 23.48% found in the first survey that was held between the 27th of June and the 10th of July. The study was conducted on over 15,000 individuals by state health officials. The minutes of the RBI Monetary Policy Committee's last meeting suggested that the members felt the constraints of the inflation target. While the members saw some more space for monetary policy support, the elevated inflation readings pushed them to vote for a status quo with an accommodative stance. The benchmark repo rate, remember, was kept unchanged at 4%, but since March, it has been cut by 115 basis points. In the legal space, the sentence hearing in the advocate Prashant Bhushan contempt case yesterday ended with the Supreme Court giving him till the 24th of August to file an unconditional apology if he so desires. In an order, the Apex Court said that if Bhushan decides to do so, the matter will be listed for the 25th of August. Meanwhile, Bhushan, earlier during the hearing, declined to apologize for his tweets made in June, for which the top court found him guilty of contempt of court last week. Also during the hearing, the Attorney General for India, Senior Advocate K.K. Venugopal, requested the bench to not punish Bhushan. He said he had a list of five former judges of the Apex Court that said that democracy had failed in the Supreme Court. In the top international news in the US, applications for unemployment benefits unexpectedly increased last week. Initial jobless claims in regular state programs rose by 135,000 to more than 1.1 million in the week ended August 15th. That's according to Labor Department data. On the other hand though, continuing claims, which are the total number of Americans claiming ongoing unemployment assistance in those programs, decreased to 14.8 million in the week ended 8th of August, which is the lowest since early April. Now, speaking of jobs, US President Donald Trump is threatening to impose tariffs on American companies that refuse to move jobs back to the country from overseas if he is re-elected. At a campaign event, he said that his administration would give tax credits to companies to bring jobs back to America. And if they don't do it, they would have to face tariffs and pay the government a lot of money. In China, a new national campaign against food waste has sparked rare speculation and anxiety about the government's ability to safely feed its 1.4 billion citizens when faced with floods, epidemics, locusts and rising tensions with some of its biggest trading partners. The sudden and massive push to curb the problem of discarded leftovers is known as the Clean Plates Campaign. More on that on the website BloombergQuint.com. In international markets, U.S. stocks climbed yet again, led by tech stocks. The tech-heavy Nasdaq ended higher by over a percent, while the Dow and the S&P 500 climbed 0.2 and 0.3 percent, respectively. And all the three early rises in the Asia-Pacific region have started the session strongly positive. And with that, it's over to Hormuz Fatakia for the trade setup for the day in India. Good morning, Hormuz. How are we looking at the end of the week? 
Good morning to you, Alex, and to our listeners as well. The Sensex and the Nifty saw their first decline in four sessions on Thursday. However, the mid-cap and the small-cap indices gained for the fourth straight day. In fact, the small-cap index has now gained in 14 out of the last 15 trading sessions. Speaking of the Nifty, and as per the latest rejig on the index, DV's Laboratories and SBI Life Insurance will be part of the 50 stock index from the 25th of September. DV's Laboratories ended at a record high on Thursday. Those on their way out are Bharti Infratel and Z Entertainment. It will be interesting to see the reaction on Z's stock which has declined only once in the last 13 trading sessions. GMM Fodler will acquire 54% stake in the global business of the Fodler Group for an overall consideration of $27.4 million. The acquisition is likely to be completed in the next 4 to 5 months. And my colleague Yash Upadhyay has done a very interesting piece on GMM Fodler and the surge that it has had in the recent past. You can read up on that on BloombergQuint.com. Bloomberg News reports that Future Retail is in talks with a consortium of banks led by State Bank of India to raise cash to help pay interest worth $14 million on its dollar notes. The company had defaulted on its earlier deadline of the 22nd of July to make the payment and is now in a 30-day grace period. The stock has gained 30% in the last two sessions. Hindalco and Ultratech have entered into a memorandum of understanding where Hindalco will be supplying 1.2 million tons of red mud per year to Ultratech's 14 cement plants located across seven states. KKR promoted Max Healthcare, which is India's second largest private hospital chain by revenue, will be listing on the bourses today. The company was formed after demerging from Max India. Some companies that will be reporting earnings today include Kolte Patel Developers, Oil India, India Bulls Housing Finance, Union Bank of India, the newly listed Rosari Biotech and Punjab National Bank. And some stocks that will be on my radar today include VA Tech Vabag. The stock has gained 16% on Thursday and it ended at the highest level in 5 months. It has gained 35% in the last 4 trading sessions. Second, Mass Financial Services saw its biggest single day gain since October 2017 on Thursday. The stock is up 23% in the last 2 sessions. And a couple of them on the back of brokerage calls. BPCL has been upgraded by BNP Paribas to buy from whole while Nestle 2 has been raised to a buy by Philip Securities. And as of closing on Thursday, the Sensex and the Nifty were up over 1% for the week, even as domestic investors continue to remain net sellers this month. The SGX Nifty is trading 90 points higher in the early trade, near the 11,400 mark. And that's all from my side this week, and with that I wish you a happy day ahead, a happier weekend ahead, and it's back to you Alex. Thanks Hormuz. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day and an even better weekend. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladitya Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.